Hi, this is a very quick video for my A-level students just showing the standard of wiring that I would expect when prototyping a bridge rectifier, that's what these four diodes here are in a breadboard circuit. Let's just zoom out a little bit so you can see what I've done here. So uh, this is the incoming uh, AC line. Uh, this is coming in at 12 volts RMS and I've got the bridge rectifier here, four diodes the output of the bridge rectifier I've got using these wires which then goes into these power rails here which then supplies my, I've just got a filament lamp there and then go back along here so this is going to be uh, my ground rail uh, on my uh, rectified side and then I've got another wire here and which then returns back to the bridge rectifier. Now you probably notice that I didn't bother to keep the insulation on the wire there. I do find that students who keep a lot of insulation on the wire invariably make their circuits quite messy. And if uh, you like using these, great. Uh, yes, I like using them too. But the exam board uh, wants you to make nice, neat circuits. Now, stripping off tiny little bits of wire with uh, the insulation on it is a little bit tricky. If there's no risk of um, anything shorting out, you're far better off using uninsulated wire so just get some plain solid core wire and just strip off the insulation and cut off little bits and then just bend them over makes a far neater uh, connection there so let's just have a quick look by the way uh, I'll just turn on the supply yes it does work now uh, so <clears throat> if uh, say this uh, solid uh, blue wire here was uh, in positive phase so then let's just zoom in so you can see probably a little bit better Hopefully you can. So if this were uh, po more positive than this wire here, so then the conventional current is then going to come into these, uh, into this track here, go across the diode here. It's a silicon diode, so there's going to be a voltage drop of 0.7 volts there. Uh, it can't go downwards because uh, that would be that would be reverse bias. So it's got to then go up this wire, and then so it goes along in what I would uh, call the power rail there. And then so it's gone through the lamp and it's returned down this orange wire, comes along this power rail here. And uh, we've got this wire here, so it comes across there. And then it then goes it, along this diode here. And then can return up here. Now you might be thinking, well, why doesn't it go uh, uh, through this diode well if you remember that this one's going to be more positive uh, than uh, this side so uh, this is the path of the current here of course when things flip around so when this um, wire here the um, blue and white wire is more positively biased than the, sorry, than the uh, solid blue wire uh, then conventional current is going to come down this wire uh, it can't go this way, can't go left wise it's got to go straight up so once again, you've got the current coming along here, and that's going to be coming back around here. And then, remember this one, in this case, would be more positively biased, so the current's not going to go there. Uh, remember, there would have been a voltage drop um, across our lamp, so uh, there's a lower voltage on this side and this side. So now the current's going to come up here. And then it goes return on the return path uh, to the transformer. So. Um, if you see what I've done there, I've kept the wires really uh, quite neat. Now, I quite like having a little bit of a hoop there. It's quite useful, particularly if I want to, um, say, attach an oscilloscope uh, test probe, you know, a clip or some other sort of clip is actually rather useful. So I don't say that you have to have the wires completely flat with the board. Um, but, say, things like diodes, I have trimmed them down to a degree. Let's just grab a diode. So uh, I've often seen some really atrocious, well, in my opinion, atrocious uh, breadboarding uh, with, uh, yeah, my students sometimes, although generally quite good, uh, certainly some atrocious stuff on the internet. And the typical thing is to have long leaded uh, components like this, just bend them over and say, just stick it in the board like that. Now, uh, if you stick it in the board like that, it, looks, it doesn't look too bad from above, but look, the wire is absolutely massive. 
don't do that, okay? Uh, if you make a bridge rectifier like that, you're going to have uh, component leads everywhere. It's not easy uh, to work with. There's a much greater chance you're going to short something out or knock those components out. Uh, these silicon diodes cost probably less than a penny each. Uh, we buy them in bulk. They're not expensive anyway, even if you're buying just a few. And so uh, I would recommend cutting them down probably something like about half the lead length. There's no definite amount that I would say, but don't cut them too short. So if I just now put that in there, and it's e far easier to put them in, uh, now they're shorter, and uh, and it's sort of bottomed out at that point, so so I know that, oh there, there it has bottomed out now, okay, so I know it's fully engaged uh, in the internal contacts in the breadboard, so I know that it's in there properly, whereas if you over trim, and I see this as uh, quite a regular problem, so let's say if you over trim like that and then you place it in the breadboard, it's not always entirely clear whether you've fully engaged the wires into the breadboard, so don't do that. Another thing you might notice there is the spacing. Now I've um, I've taken say one, two, three, four, five holes across. Now typically when I use uh, through hole components in a breadboard like this I have a spacing of one, two, three, four. So as soon as it comes out the body of the component, in this case silicon diode, I bend it straight over. That's going to keep your circuit more compact. So uh, a few tips for you there. Um, if you're one of my students and we're going to be making a bridge rectifier uh, very soon, I want the bridge rectifier to be very, very neat like this. Now, one final thing. Uh, you might be thinking, ah, oh, well, actually, that doesn't really look like the bridge rectifier that we've got. So, you know, typically you can have something like that. Well, actually, it looks entirely like it. You've just got to rotate this around a little bit. So now, hopefully, you can see that uh, this point, which has come from the secondary of the transformer, is going to here. You see these uh, two? Let's just zoom in a little bit. Maybe it uh, might make it a little bit clearer. Uh, so this wire here is this wire, which is going in between uh, that point of the diode and that point. So the cathode there and the anode there. So this wire is connecting to the cathode of this diode and the anode of this diode. Uh, and then uh, the output, the positive um, output there of the rectified waveform is being taken from there, from the uh, cathode of that diode there and sure enough we're taking the output from the cathode of that diode there which also happens to be connected uh, to the uh, cathode there which is is quite correct uh, don't forget you know these bands the bands on the silicon diodes indicate these flat sides here the cathodes okay so um yeah, it is just the same. Uh, you can see that this wire here relates to this one and then this wire here, which is the zero volt rail, that, that's um, connecting there. So it is exactly the same. It might not be uh, turned around like that. And I've seen people try to do breadboarded circuits where they try to have this like diamond pattern. Uh, you don't need to. You know, that is far, far neater. Much, much better job, I think. Make it really clear. And um, OK, that's it for the video then.